What's up everyone, Jeremy here, mtgheadquarters.com, bringing you Sealed Saturdays pre-release edition. So this is the last pre-release pack I had. As you know, I gave away all of the ones I had in a contest. However, it occurred to me that I, while I'm doing a lot of sealed stuff, um, um, the most people will play sealed at probably pre-release events, right? So this is a pre-release Dragon's Maze pack. We're gonna pretend that I just sat down at the table, I'm excited, I'm hopped up on Red Bull, and uh, this is a brand new set, so you'll know that, uh, you know that not everyone really has a clear indication of what the cards do. You need every bit of those 20 minutes to build your deck in pre-release. So normally you'd get like six packs, right? But in Dragon's Maze, you, you essentially got six packs. You got four from Dragon's Maze, which was the new set at the time, and then two companion packs, which this happened to be Simic and Selesnya. So green, white, blue are your colors. So just like any pre-release, we go digging for bombs because that matters, right? I mean, if you pull a Planeswalker, you play it. I mean, that's Precinct Captain's pretty good in our rare slot there. Kind of think of this as a pack of RTR. It's really just a pack of RTR that is green-white. And this is basically a pack of gate crash that just happens to be green blue. Mystic Genesis Burn. That is a pretty poopy rare and limited. I don't know if anyone plays it in constructed, but we're in trouble, folks. No bombs yet. Let's see what Dragon's Maze has for us. Obviously, a voice of resurgence would be much appreciated. It's been quite a while since I ooh, I forgot Beetle Form Mage is really good. Uh, two. But let's see what we got. It's been a while since I've looked at Dragon's Maze. Holy crap. Gruel War Chant's really good. Varel the Hull Clade. So if we were playing Simic, we've got the Simic card we want. Um, Yubulsar Gatekeepers. When, I didn't see a lot of... Uh, well, actually, I saw some good Simic stuff. But we want uh, lots of good Simic stuff to play Simic because... It's not the greatest combo. And I like it. I really like the mechanic. It's just a give and take. That's uh, Simic right there. Very good. Oh, a Tessa. Oh, boy. Vigilance protection from creatures. She's a bomb. That's for sure. And in the Dragon's Maze uh, pre-release, with all these Guild Gates and Clue Stones, you could easily play many many colors another beetle form mage is very good in limited blast of genius i hate that card <laughs> catch and release is our rare so many gilgates batman boy this pool is uh maybe i'm just gonna play like uh a ton of beetle form mages seems like i got one in every pack World Leaders Helix is really good. And Breaking and Entering. Boy, okay. Well, we're going to color sort here. First, I'm going to uh, color sort by multicolor. Then uh, we'll come back. All right, we're back. So if you guys remember Dragon's Maze, I mean, really all the power lied in the two color cards. What do we have for fixing? We have a Selesnya Guildgate, two Simic Guildgates, a uh, couple Orzov and Arakdos. So what I'm thinking is um, green, blue, either white or uh, black, white. Orzov Gilgate is not bad um, if I'm playing white and I want to splash for like Tessa or something like that. So artifacts, I mean, we have a buttload of clue stones. So we have fixing that we need. Now I'm looking at... Um, I'm really looking at here my support colors, and then we'll get to multicolors. So in white, Precinct Captain is very good. Security Blockade, Avenging Arrow, Ethereal Armor. There's definitely some good white cards here. Uh, Hazda Snare Squad is really, really good in a, a white aggro build. In black Horn Collars Chant, too expensive, although in, in limited, maybe. Seek the Horizon, maybe, if you're going to do some splashing. Towering Indrik is good. Adaptive Snapjaw, so I... Since I'm looking for Simic, 
because that's the way that this was supposed to be built. I keep an eye out on Evolve cards. Ivy Lay Denizen's good. Experiment 1's very good. Random Clue Stone I missed. Um, you know, green is kind of weak. There's a couple of Evolvers, but... Other, um, I don't know. Here's blue. Maze Glider. Runner's Bane can be good. Wind Drake. We've got some good evasion. Simic Flux, Ma Flux Mage is good. Spell Rupture can be okay. Cloudfront Raptor is really good. Totally lost is playable. Red is extremely weak. There's not even, I mean, two Maze Rushers and poop. I'm not playing any version of red, that's for sure. Uh, in black, Ublesar Gatekeepers. Maze Abomination. Crypt Incursion. Black is black is really weak too. Um, so in the two colors, Call of the Conclave is really good. Selesnia, uh, anyway. Kamban's very good. Courses of Cord is very good. Um, in Simic, Draquim Krasis is really good. Hydroform, nah, I don't think so. Mystic Genesis, I guess. Elusive Krasis is very good. Gruel War Chant can be good in an aggro build. Blaze Commando sucks. Flux Charger, if you can build her on it, is good. Tide Drinker is very, very good. Um, Varel um, is extremely good in the Simic build. And the fact that we got her, or him, him, kind of tells me that I'm going to play some version of Simic because I have enough Simic creatures. Beetle Form Mage is very good. Give and take, again, very good. Um... Jalen Sphinx is really, really good too. Alive and Well is good. Morgue Burst is ugh, borderline playable. Deputy of Acquittals. Tessa, now the question is do I want to splash for her? I don't know. I'm not playing any version of Red. Beetle Form Mage is very good. Breaking and entering another Beetle Form Mage. So I think what I'm going to look at is I'm going to build Simic and see how close I can get. Because in limited of having a really having continuity and reliability in your deck uh, is really good. And honestly, the beetle form mages and the flyers and the evasion that I have in Simic um, might just get me there. And I don't see anything in the other colors that's like a must splash, right? In the green, white, like even in the dual colors, like something that's blue. Um, I'll look, but uh, let's see where I get with just Simic right now. In playables. Looking at mostly Simic stuff, this is not a great seal pool, but one thing I've learned from playing limited and especially at pre-releases, um, you want to play your fatties generally. Evasion is really good and having um, continuity is really good. So like splashing for a Tessa might be okay. Um, or maybe, uh, boy, none of these other two color cards are really worth splashing. Alive and well, no. Jalen Sphinx. I mean, I could splash. I could throw the two Orzhov Gilgates in there and play Tithe Drinker and Tessa Envoy of Ghosts. But this is where we where we are. Um, let me let me uh, cost sort for you. I think this deck is is pretty ridiculous. All right. So starting out because Gilgates are relevant here. Um, we don't really have enough of them to trigger the gatekeepers with any reliability, but uh, I have gatekeepers in this deck to simply evolve, really. And then if I hit on the if I hit on the gate, that's fine. And maybe I get greedy and do this, but we'll see. All right, so two Simic Gill gates. Um, those don't really count. So we have Experiment One and Cloudfin Raptor, which are two extremely hard to deal with one drops. Spell Rupture to keep them off the board. Runner's Bane. Then we've got a green side Watcher to help ramp with two gates. That's pretty good. Simic Flux Mage, Flux Mage is probably the weakest of the evolving creatures I have. However, it does evolve. It does play off with um, Ivy, Lane, Ivy Lane Denizen, which is really good in this deck. Wind Drake, flat out evasion. Same thing with Drake Wind Krasis. Elusive Krasis is unblockable. Usually, usually you can get it to like a, a 3-5 pretty reliably. Um, and then you've got Varel here, which is a basically our win, a win condition. Because for two mana, you can double the number of counters on anything. So you can double the counters on your unblockables. You can double the counters on your flyers. Anything with Evolve, right? 
Uh, Beetle Thorn Mage is extremely difficult to deal with in the early game because it comes out on turn three, and turn four you can be swinging with a four-four flyer, or turn you know five-six you might have a couple of these out, and you pump them and you're swinging with three or four four-four flyers. So I playing three of them, give and take is extremely good in this deck. Obviously, uh, one maybe I want to put tokens on something that isn't doesn't have evolve so that I can double them down with Varel, and maybe I want to put them on Varel. Um, so it's just good. Another couple Beetle Form Mages. So really Gatekeepers. Again, I'm open to basically pulling out both Gatekeepers in this deck, dropping in two Orzhov Gilgates, and trying to play Tessa, because she's that good. Ivalene Denizen, Towering Indric. Another Gatekeeper is totally lost as pseudo-removal. Adaptive Snapshot in draft is just not that good, um, but it does basically evolve everything when it hits the field, and maybe you throw a give and take on it so that it's a 6-5. Um, it, it, it does evolve fairly very easily, but it's still totally exposed and doesn't have trample or anything, but it's still that good. Um, May is glider is extremely good given the number of two-color cards we have in here because multicolored creatures get flying. Maze Behemoth is good because it's trample and you can use give and take to make it really good. It also evolves most everything. How many cards do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2. We have room for one more. Um, and maybe I throw in... Uh, boy, it's kind of hard to say. The pool is really... Bad. I guess I'll throw the Mystic Genesis in there. Uh, again, I'm throwing out the possibility of because you've got um, because I've got the Gatekeeper, which can untap gates. You might be able to say instead of playing the Mystic Genesis, you could be really greedy, okay, and play Seek the Horizon, Tours of Gilgates, and a Tessa. And then you could um, cut something here. Now that you put those two additional guild gates, you don't really want to cut the gatekeepers because they're that much better. I mean, maybe... Eh. I mean, you could go... I guess in the limited in a pre-release event, I, I might be tempted to do this because it's like a turn seven win, right? If they can't deal with it immediately. Plus you put two extra guild gates in... So now your gatekeepers, one of them gains you seven life, and the other one draws you two cards. Maybe I cut one beetle form mage. I just go completely greed, play Tessa. And then you have Seek the Horizon to pull out your swamps and forests if you need them. Swamps and plains, I mean. Actually, then you could play the Selesnia Gilgate too. Yeah, I probably would do this. <laughs> I probably would. Um... You could throw a clue stone or two in if you if you really had to. This would be the build I would rock. Simic splash for Tessa. All right. Well, that's what I would do with my Dragon's Maze uh, pre-release event deck. I pr that's probably not a win at all type deck, but it's going to be competitive. I mean, if you get the Coffin Raptor out there early or the Experiment one, and you have basically turn two, turn three, turn four things that evolve it. Uh, you're probably going to win the game. If you get your Cloudfin Raptor out in turn 5, it doesn't matter as much, right? But if you get turn 1 Cloudfin or Experiment 1, obviously Cloudfin Raptor turn 1, turn 2 Experiment 1, turn 3 Double Evolve is really, really good too. Um, there's enough good stuff going on in this deck to be competitive. I hope you enjoyed this deck building, this little bit of fun Blast from the Past Dragon Maze and you know pre-release ideas. If you did, please uh, take a moment to crush the thumbs up button below the video. And also, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. I'd love to know you and hear from you in the comment section down below. I'm Jeremy, and we'll talk to you again real soon. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Check out some of our most popular playlists. Everything from MTG vlogs, gameplay video, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. And if you haven't yet, here's your opportunity to crush that subscribe button to join the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channel on YouTube. Thanks again, and we'll see you real soon.